Schof. 28 is today's blot. We got to the mission. Let's go back, review a little bit. Two dots. Review the Marshall McCutton because I just wanted to go. Review the validates even a cotton for Kriyas Megillah and the Gemara said before which what kind of cotton? A cotton that would say Gila Chinuch. A child that's old enough that you have to start educating him. Um, review the, so review the says. Again. Kodno Yisiv Korisil Lamalo Mi Reb Tarfin. Who's Kenny Balud? Review the says when I was a child, I used I was the Balkari. For Reb Tarfin and his Kenny Balud, Amalo Emi Viraim in a cotton. Your recollection is not accurate. The Tanya Tanya Om Rebbe Kotno Yisiv Korisi Lamalam Reb Yudo. He says I was Balkari for Reb Yudo himself. Here, Om Rebbe Lohim Rai Emi Viraim in a matir. Of course you were Reb Yudo holds that a cotton is qualified. So of course you were qualified. So Em Rivin Rai Min Amatir. If you tell me that you read the Megillah for the Chachomim who disagree with Reb Yudo, that tells me that they they accept your Reb Yudo's position. But that you tell me you the Balkari for Reb Yudo who validates a cotton. So what, what does that prove? Proves nothing. Maybe Rai Min Amatir for Leim Rulei. You know it's like the guy who gave a gave a Hersher on uh, Hebrew National. It's kosher. The Rabbi gave the Hersher for Hebrew National. Yeah, if, if he wouldn't need it, you understand he wouldn't give the Hersher. So Mars says Chad the vote comer, like two things. Chad the cotton ho yiso. Firstly, your credibility as a witness has no value. The old I feel the God law yiso. Even if you be an adult, and be rhyming a matter, who did you read it for? You read it for the position who validates the cotton. Okay, we'll leave the Mishnah. And Kordis and Megillah, one does velo malin. One does not read the Megillah. One doesn't do circumcision velo tovlin. Lomazin, this is a person like Azov or Azovo, or a person needs the sprinkle of Paraduma, <coughs> a woman where it's during the 11 day period where even if she sees blood, she's only, she has to, ch has to take one day at a time. All these cases which are things which relate to the day, you cannot do it before sunrise, even though, see, even though dawn doing his day, right? Nevertheless, you have to wait till sunrise. Why? Because if you do something before sunrise, there's a concern you may do it too early. It still means nighttime. Sunrise, it's obvious it's day. But factually, if you do all these things after dawn, kosher, it's valid. So if you circumcise a child, but it's not a chatechila. Because you're taking a chance, you're doing it in a period of time, you may make a mistake. But sunrise, it's obviously the, the sun has risen. Nolan, how do we know that the Megillah has to be read during the daytime? Right? We're saying it has to be, so the earliest you can read the Megillah is when? After sunrise. It says these days, it says Yomim. They should be remembered and done. So, what is the indication? What's the word inference? Yomim. The Yomim ain't belied low. So, we have a problem. Lameth have two of Rabbi Shuman Levi. Seemingly, this Bryce refutes Rabbi Shuman Levi. What are the Omar? Rabbi Shuman Levi, Chayv Odom Likros and Megillah Balayil Lishnos Bayom, right? Rabbi Shuman Levi says you have not you should read the Megillah at night and again read it again during the daytime. From here it seems to be that what Hayom Niskarim V'Nasim, it's the day and not the night time. You have no obligation to read it at night. On that tomorrow's Ketone Hayom, no, our Mishnah is speaking about the daytime reading. You have an obligation to read night and day. However, the daytime reading should be only from sunrise, not before sunrise. Lomalin. One doesn't do circumcision at night time. Why? The chsiv b'yom hashmini. Could have said u'b'shmini. Could have said right. What is it? Yom hashmini. So b'yom v'lo b'layla, v'lo tov v'lo mazin. One doesn't immerse himself in the mikvah, v'lo mazin, or have the par of the, the sprinkling of the par dumanim on the chsiv. V'izo hator ala tomeg. What does it say? The Torah will sprinkle on the tomeg b'yom hashvi b'yom. And since the Torah juxtaposes the sprinkling to the immersion in the mikvah, so just as the mikvah has to be during daytime, similarly, the what? The sprinkling has to be in the, in, during the daytime. It's understood. All tefillos. Right? All tefillos are during the daytime. It's not at the nighttime. 
it's a shol taich. I mean, a tevi kariri shona shol zav. Now, what's the halacha? Um, a person has a, a, a seminal discharge, goes to the mikveh during that day. That night he's okay. So I, we say, what's the halacha? A zav. A zav means a man has a flow. If he has two flows, he's what? He's called a zav cotton. He's, he has to count seven clean days. Three he has to bring a carbon in addition. Okay. What? How do we count the first sighting? Of the zav, a male, not a woman, a male. It has a, it's like a seminal discharge. He goes to the mikveh, and the nighttime he's okay. A woman has a sighting which is blood, although it's during the eleven day period, which is it's the first sighting of a zava, right? We're saying she can't go to the mikveh. She has to wait till the next morning. So I would think that what since the zav could go immediately during daytime. So I'd say the woman would maybe similarly also could go during the daytime that day. The answer is no. She has to wait till the next day. The next day she has to go. Wait. The first sighting of Azov, the Torah so, uh, uh, equates it to the Balkari, the Chsiv. Zos Torah Sazov. This is the law of the Zov, the male. And a person who has Shikh Vazera. Ma Balkari Tova Bayom. Just the Balkari has the sighting, goes to the mikveh immediately during the daytime. Hainami the Tova Bayome. So he'll also be able to go during, to the mikveh during the daytime. So says, How could she be tovel? Right? It says, How could she go? It's, we, we equate her to a nida. When does a nida? A nida, when she goes, she has to count full seven days when she goes to the eighth night. So, what's the consideration? She can be tovel during the day. It says she's, we equate her to a nida. But let her go at night. What does she have to wait the next day? Right? Right, let her go, and she'll wait till the next day, and then she'll be permitted to husband. Kamash Malon, Kevin, the boy Sviro, since ultimately you have to count, right, if in fact you have to count, if she's a real Zub, she has to count seven clean days. Here you have to count day by day, and add up if the three consecutive days she has these sightings, then she becomes a full fledged Zubba. Right? Sphere with your mama, he so just as the sphere is with your mama, you count during the daytime. Therefore, the tefillah also has to be during the daytime, not at nighttime. But it says whether you circumcised the child after Murashachar, whether you read the Megillah after Murashachar, all these things that are mentioned, but the evidence kosher. How do we know that dawn, maybe sunrise is day, and pre sunrise is not day? Right? How do we know dawn is day? So the Mark quotes Pesukim, same going on the brachas that base on the base. Howard. Dawn is day. When you say it dawns on you, I say Vanda woke up. It dawns on you. He says to me, it dawns on me. It's not light. Dawn is not light. Day has nothing to do with light. Day has nothing to do with light. Okay. Right. B'shola murashachar kosher minoanim. How do we know that dawn is day? Dawn is day. Like I say, first thing you say, it dawns on me. He, he finally woke up, I see. It dawns on you. Okay. Howard, I'm not directing it at you. Omar Rovo. The Omar Kro, Vayikra Lakim Laor Yom. It says, Hashem called the light day. Right? Lameir Bo Koro Yom. says, What does that mean? That as the sun is coming up, what's dawn? Sunrise means the sun has risen above the horizon. Right? So we're saying that maybe what's day when it rises above the horizon? No. When it's c coming to rise, which is 72 minutes before you actually see the sun, that's already dawn. It's already the scent is there. Of course, it says he called light day. What is or What's or? That's the mayor. Although it's not, you don't see the light yet, but since the sun is rising, it's on its ascent, that's there already. Before you see the, the, the sun on the horizon. Well, I'll tell you, see, there's, there's a question, halacha, halacha. When, when you see the dawn, at dawn, when you see, especially on an airplane, you could see this. The sky is black, but on the horizon, you see a pencil-thin li line of light. Pencil-thin, that's no thicker than that. That is dawn. It's already you see the first light 
of the sun coming up. Light, light, light. No, 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 no. That's no, light, light. That's light. As I said, you see, for, for davening, the sun has to come up. The light has to come up into the sky. The sun has to illuminate the sky, though you don't see the sun itself. But 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 the evit, as long as you see that pencil thin thing, line of light, that's the very beginning of dawn. That is the very beginning of dawn. No, no, sky, no, no. You, you, no, this is before the sky lightens. The sun hasn't risen high enough to cast its light onto the sky. The sky is still dark. That what? That's after this. That's after dawn. After that's that's you're already beyond dawn already. You're not sunrise, but it's beyond dawn. When you get to the coastal to start dabbling for the nets, right? Take some 20 minutes still to get for nets. That's already dawn has been there for a while already. Because you get there, it's already light. It's light out, even though you don't see the you don't see the sun on the on the horizon. It hasn't risen above that, but it's come up enough that the sky is already light. No, then it's it's pretty light. It's pretty light. It's pretty light. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what does or mean? Or mean the mayor. So, Mar asked the question, Elamiata, Vilachoshech, Koralailo. Darkness is called night. Does it mean, say, Lamachshit, Ubo, Koralailo? The darkening, the darkening, there's, there's no entity of darkening, right? A sun, you could say, it's the light. Light is an entity. Darkness is an absence of light. So, what is, what is Lachoshech? It doesn't mean the Machshich, what's causing the darkness. It means darkness. Or light means light. So, it doesn't mean. The sphere that creates the light. It's not when it starts getting dark. You have to see the stars. When the stars come out, that's light. That's night. Different pasuk. We go. This is what, what we go to work. When does the day begin? You know, you go out to work in the field. What do you have? You have your weapons there. So you have arrows are holding the spears. Ma, it says in the Posuk, Me'alos ha-shachar at-seisogokhovim. From dawn, so when do you go to work? From dawn until, until the stars come out. That's the first Posuk. This Posuk, Rega, this Posuk is in Nehemiah, okay? But then he quotes Ve'omer, another Posuk, Rega, Ve'omer, Ve'hoyilon ha-laylo le-mishmor. And the night will be the watch. My vote, what's it adding? Why wasn't the first Pusik sufficient to tell me that day starts at dawn and night comes at Sisko Chobim, right? So the answer is Chitem, it's him, we're very, 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 the first pasuk quoted in the Chemi means when they say they're already working at Amur Hashachar, it's before day. And when it says they stayed to say Sochovim, they stayed, they worked into the night, right? Tashma v'yilonu halay lo mishmor. V'yom alocha, no, it says. The night is a time not to work, and the day is for work. So if that's the case, if it says hayom alocha, so when it says Amur Hashachar, they were working, it's not because they went earlier, but rather that is day. Dawn is day. And because it's day, that's why they're in the field working already. Okay. You can read the Megillah any time during the day. Of course, this is a Zri, you do it as early as possible. But if any, as long as it's before Shkia, you read the Megillah. Kriya Sahalel. Read him Halel. Tkiya Sahshofer. Mars will bring Psuk Monday. Also blowing the Shofer is daytime. Tilas Lulov. Go and take the loop during daytime. Tfilas musafim. What about tfilo? Ulu bring the korban musaf. Ulu vidi aporim. Right? If a person, they, they have to bring a, a vidu, they have to bring the par, whatever it's par uh, helam dover for the community. For the community. Vidu meiser. Vidu meiser in the base of migdosh. Vidu yom kipurim. This is bring with the korban. Lesmicho, lishrito, leaning on the korban, slaughtering the korban. For waving the korban, la gosha, touching the korban to the mizbeach. 
It's part of the ritual. Lekmitzah, taking the palm full of the mincha, right? Laktoris, sacrificing. Lemeliko, right? Lemeliko is to put the thumbnail through the bird. Lekabolo, receiving the blood. Lazoya, sprinkling the blood. Lashkoya, sota. You want to, uh, the ritual of the sota, that you should drink it. La rifus egla, breaking the neck of the, of the calf when you find the corpse, so we don't know exactly, right? Lashkoya soto, giving it to drink, okay? La rio, excuse me. La tarasa mitzora, the ritual to purify the mitzora. Kolalailo kosher l'ktsir, however, kolalailo kosher l'ktsir, cutting of domers at nighttime. Hekta chalom veivorim, sacrificing the fats and limbs, even at night. That you can even do it in the day, but even at night time. Sakhal, kosher dov mitzvosa biyom, any mitzvah which has relevance to the day, kosher kolayom. Okay? It's, it's, it's valid during the daytime, throughout the day. Dov shem mitzvosa balayla, something that the mitzvah is at night time, kosher kolayla. It's not the very beginning of the night, it's the whole night. Okay? It's a famous question, it was asked to Rav Chaim Brisker, here in Shailah. A moel. You don't do Milo, do you? No, you don't do it. Okay. It's not your thing. Okay. So, um, so uh, the question was, a moel, there's only one moel, and he had two children, two, two children to circumcise. A Milo Bismano, an eighth day bris, and a bris that was already delayed. For whatever reason, they weren't able to circumcise the child on the eighth day, so it's, let's say, the tenth day. Which, bri which bris should you do first? The eighth day brith, bris? Or the the one that was delayed. She said, maybe said, once it's delayed, it's delayed. You might have to do this one it's as quick as, as early as possible. It's on the eighth day. The Yom Hashemini Yom Tzara No, no, you're going to do both on the eighth day. You can do both today. But which one should have prior over the other? That's why you're not Rab Chaim Brisker. Thank God. She explains, this way explains it. Torah says you should circumcise the child on the eighth day. Why do you do it as early as possible? Because the reason I'm not is you do a mitzvah, you should do it as early as possible. Once you pass the eighth day, every moment you have an obligation. It's not just reasons anymore. You have an obligation to circumcise that child as quickly as possible. Not because you should do a mitzvah as quickly as possible. Because every moment you remain uncircumcised, it's a problem. The Torah says you have a whole day to circumcise the child if it's the eighth day. You have a whole day. But of course, it's better to do it early because when you do a mitzvah, you should do it a mitzvah earlier. Once it's the ninth day already, now the child has to be circumcised. You don't have the leeway of a whole day. So every moment, you're a violation of not circumcising the child. So that's why you take the ninth day child and circumcise first, and then you do an eighth day child. Okay? You understand now? Now you're starting to think about Rechaim Briska. Okay, so that's the Mishnah. Any mitzvah that's kosher biyom, it's kosher kolayom. Any mitzvah that you can do during the daytime, the whole day is valid. Of course, we try to do it earlier, that's the reason Magdalene mitzvahs, to do the mitzvah sooner. Any mitzvah that's kosher at night, the whole night's kosher. Should you wait till a half an hour before dawn? Of course not. You should do the mitzvah as quickly as possible. But it's no less valid doing it later than doing it earlier. It's the mitzvahs the whole day. You following? Svarim. Look, the Svarim is the same shulchan we have. Right? If you have reason that you can't do it early, you do it later. <laughs> no, you've got to accumulate the money to pay the mail. They have a hefty fee. They, you know, they light a lot of candles on that tray, and everybody has to light a candle. It takes a half a day until they light all the candles. How's the caterer? He knows all this. Okay. Okay. Minolan, how do we know the Megillah? Is read, could be read throughout the day. Right? Yomim is the days. The How do you know Chris is read during the daytime? When the Mizrach Shemesh, when the sun rises until it sets. That's that passage we say in Halil. What else did we, Howard? What else did we use this passage for? Now, remember what we used this puzzle for? I don't know. You, 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 I'm the second line to the Gemara. The Kriyas Hahalel. How do we say Kriyas Ma? How do we know Hahalel is during the daytime? And it's kosher the whole day. How do we know? Because it says, and how do we say, Mizrach Hashem Shad Mvo. Dovid says, you could say it from the time the sun rises until it sets. 
So what's that? That's the whole daytime period. You following? You, you, 20B Gemara. Wrong page. No, that's exactly what we're talking about. What else was this person used for previously? See it. Yeah, that's what you learn from this puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what else did we learn? We had this earlier. The Gemara says before, the Mishnah says that if you read Halel not in its sequential order, you're not Yotze. How do we know this? It's more close to the same Pasuk. Just as when the sun rises, it rises from east to west, not backwards. So therefore, the order of the Halel also has to be in the sequential order that it's set. The same Pasuk. The Gemara reads the same Pasuk. Okay? Then Rabbi Yossi says the same thing. How do we know it has to be read in sequential order? Because it's Zayom Osa Hashem, the day. How does the day go? It goes forward. It doesn't go backwards. So similarly, when you read the Megillah, right, Halel has to be in that order. Latilas Luv, how do we know the Luv has be, could be taken during the daytime? Right? You take it, it says Yom. What does Yom mean? Yom, not nighttime. But it's day. Tkia Shov, how do we know Shov is during the daytime? Tkhsiv, Yom, Trua Yelochem. Yom. So that's daytime. Ulam Musav, and how do the carbon Musav is brought during the daytime, although it's in the afternoon? Tkhsiv, Dvar Yom, Biyomo. It's day in and day out. Dvar Yom. Rega. What's the post? Elo Mode Hashem, Ashetikros and Mikrai Kodesh. You listen? Lahakrif Ishel Hashem, Ola Umintra Zerach Unusochim Dvar Yom Biyomo. That includes all the Karbonus, including the Musaf. That's Dvar Yom Biyomo. Ulit Filas Hamusaf. What about Filas Musaf? Kimusafin Shavu, right? What do we have Musaf? We say Musaf instead of the Karbon Musaf. That is the equivalent of the Musaf. Right? Musaf is rabbinical. Okay, levidui porim, vidui of the par. The par has to bring the oxen that are brought on the Yom Kippur, Berkong, whoever it is, whenever the bull is brought, vidui, confession accompanies it. Violov kaporo, kaporim Yom Kippurim. We have Xerah Shava, the time you got Yom Kippurim. What does it say regarding Yom Kippur? The coin Godel has to bring a par, he brings an ox, a bull. Chiper bado va'ad beiso. And over there it's speaking about Vidui. The, the Kohen Gadol says Vidui a number of times, right? On, on, the, on his Karba. And over there, why? Because it says, It says, On that day you will be atoned. So we see that the Vidui of the Kohen Gadol is when? During the daytime, his confession. So similarly here, when, the, when they bring the, the par, let's say par helam dover, the majority of show, made a mistake they ate a certain type of non-kosher fat or whatever it is also the vidu is during daytime vidu maser what's vidu maser that after after three years in the fourth year of the sabbatical year you have to distribute all the tithes that weren't distributed right biyarti akodesh min abayis dechsiv amart lefnei Hashem lekechem biyarti akodesh min abayis I've rid I've removed all that's holy from the house so mechlei hayom hazeh Hashem alechem mitzavek mitzavcha today hayom hazeh when you lean on the carbon has to be done during the daytime. When you slaughter the carbon has to be during the daytime. The Torah joke juxtaposes the leaning to the slaughtering of the carbon. Bob and what does it say? When you bring the carbon. When do you slaughter the carbon? Bayom, during the daytime. And so the Torah juxtaposes smicha the leaning to the shita. Therefore it's also done during the daytime. Ulitnufa, waving the mincha, you wave the mincha, you wave certain carbonos. The chsiv, beyom hanifchem es haomer, right? The day that you wave the omer, the waving. So he says beyom la gosha. When you take the mincha, you put it to the corner of the bezbeach. The iskish litnufa, because the Torah juxtaposes ha gosha. The chsiv v'lokach kom yaro isha. This is by by the mincha sota. As mincha zaknos v'heinif v'hikriv. V'heinif, he waves it. The hikriv, then he brings it close to the mizbeach. That's the agosha. Lemlika, how do you know when he puts the nail through the bird, the coin, right? It's called melika. Ula kmitz lak toro, ula zoy, all those. The dechsev, biyom tzavosus bnei Yisrael. It says biyom, regarding that, biyom tzavoso. Tzadi. 
because it says, I should see Hashem as Moshe Bar Sinai, Biom Tavos al Bispene Israel, Lahakriv es Korbanehem, all the Korbanos, Lashem bin Midbar Sinai. So that includes everything, okay? Sota, how do we know Sota? We say that the ritual of Sota is during the Rindit. Asyo Torah Torah. We have Xerishova, Xivhocha, Vosla, Akoi, Kolha Torah Zos. The Kohen does the, whatever the laws, right? Uxiv Hosam, Apia Torah Sheirucha, Vala Mishpot. What's Mishpot? Mishpat ma mishpat. A court can only convene during the daytime, right? Court cannot convene at nighttime. Ma mishpat bayo, ma afkan bayo. So similarly, the what the Torah of the Sot is also during the daytime. Ula rifus heglo. When you break the neck of the calf in the valley, Omer Omer Yidveriyane kaporuksiv says kapora, and then they will be atoned. We're not sure who the murderer was. Right, you measure to the city, close to the city, and the elders of that city, they bring the Egla Rufo. So what is that? And they have a couple, what's Kapar? Kapar, it's Karbonos, Ksiv, or Kekochim, since I coach him. Ula Tars Mitzorah, the Ksiv, Zostia, Torah, Sabatzorah, Biyom Toroso. Right, the whole ritual to purify the Mitzorah, the shaving of his hair, whatever it is, whatever that ritual is, everything is during the daytime. Okay, Kol Alaylo, Kosh Lekzir, Saomer. The whole night period, time period, that's when you, you cut the, the grain for the Omer. The Omer, Mak Tzira Usvira Balaylo. Tzira, the cutting and the Sphira. Right, when do we count Sphira? Count Sphira at night time. Sfarto Chem Mochas Shabbos. We start counting 49 days, right? So when is the Sphira? Sphira is at night time. Vavo Beyom, Sphira is at night time, and the actually bringing. Is of the Omer is, is during daytime. When do you sacrifice the limbs and the fats on the Mizbeach? The Chsiv Kola Laila Raboker says it should be Al Eish Tukatbo. It burns all night. Zakalal Kol Dov Shemitzvah Sabiyom Kosher Kola Yom. Anything which the Mitzvah is during daytime, the whole day period is is valid. Zakmar says Zakalal. I mean, we've already delineated all the cases. So what do we have to give the? And we said it's Kosher all day. This is the rule. What's this rule? I mean, it's totally superfluous. Evidently, if the if the Tan is concluding with this is the rule, evidently this discovers something which we haven't discussed. What haven't we discussed? Seemingly, we discussed everything, with the nighttime and the daytime. Zakla lesuimai. This rule that we say, this rule, comes to include what? Lasuisidi bezichin, besil bezichin. Hear this? Now every Shabbos daytime, they would change the showbread. And they would change, they had cups of incense that they would burn. And after they burned, then you were, the Koran were permitted to eat the showbread. And then they put new showbread, they put new cups of incense. This, these cups, one way they removed. One way they removed, one way they put there. Only during the daytime. Here, That's what it comes to include. Setting up the new cups of incense and the removal of the incense. The tiny Rabbi Yosef says, "See like as I show no." No, no. They had to first take the bezichin or the cups. The, after you took off the incense, then you were permitted to take off the bread. You couldn't eat the bread until the incense, the cups of incense, were removed. So it says, "See like as I show no shachris, see this I chadosh arvis, em bekachlum." Yeah, you took off. This is already. You took off the new bread the old bread in the morning, and you put back the new bread in the evening. And it's okay. One second. says, it says the showbread should be there continuously. Continuously, means it shouldn't be absent for a day. Tomid means for a day. The Chachamim say no. Can hardly do it. We rule like the Chachamim. As they as they remove the other, they push down the new one. That, that's the Chachamim. This is Rabbi Yosi. This is Rabbi Yosi. Rashi over here. Take a look at Rashi. Dom Misach Zimnoch Zafilu Silek Es Ayushana Shacharis. They talk up the old bread in the morning. The Sides Hachodosh Arvis. They set up the new in the evening. Evening means towards before the day's over. Avzu Hoisa Tomid. Mal Tomid, what does it mean? Tomid Shlo Yona Shulchan below Lechem. You shouldn't wait till dawn, even at night time. It's fine. As long as you don't have the t complete period of time without bread, it's okay. Avrabona, the Rabbana argue. Tvachu Shalzeh 
Misadim, it's that you push it in. One tefach, as you're removing it, the other one you're pushing in. It should never ever be vacant. Not for a moment. And that's what we rule like the Chachomim. That's the Chachomim. Whenever they would do it, it's Whatever they did it, doesn't matter. Had to be done on Shabbos. Okay? The Tanya. Excuse me, I'm early, I'm sorry. Shalai Shulch Midlar. Dvarshim Mitzvah Balai, Lo Koshka Lai. What does that come to include? It's kosher all night. Lasui Mai, Lachilas. Now, we have fame in Psalchim, in, in, in we have Machlokas. You can eat the Korm Pesach till midnight, or you can eat the Korm Pesach till dawn. It's Machlokas, Rabbi Loza ben Azai in the Chachomim, right? Lasui Achlis Psalchim, Udalok, Rabbi Loza ben Azariah. That's what it comes to. It's kosher all night, you can eat the Pesach. Tanya. Vochlis ab Vosur Balai Laze, Omra Blaza Ben Azari, Nema Khan Balai Laze, Venema Lalo Varati, Beritz and Surin Balai Laze, and when was the Bakas Bechor? Bakas Bechor was at midnight. So just as Makas Bechor Balai Laze means midnight, and by the Pesach, when it says Laze, it's also midnight. Balorat Chatzos, Afkanat Chatzos. So our mission is not going like Rabbi Loza Ben Azari, okay? It says, Oh, shall do we rule like Rabbi Loza Ben Azari? Don't we rule? Usually it's a Yochad Barabim, right? Minority, but verse of you. But it's not simple. Let's take a look at Tosfos here. Mikom Nireh, he says, even though the Gemara says the Mishnah is going like, like the Chachom, not like Reb Lozim and Azariah, that you can eat the Korn Pesach all night. Nireh da'aloha ke Reb Lozim and Azariah. We rule like Reb Lozim and Azariah. Do'ika stome barvi psochim, because we have an anonymous Mishnah in Arvi psochim, which goes like Reb Lozim and Azariah, the Koi Kavosa, he did none. A Pesach Achatzos Metamis Yodayim. It says, Pesach, if you keep it till after Chazos, if you touch it, rabbinically you become contaminated. Why? Because it's considered already off limits. You can't eat it. Why? But if we rule like the Chachamim, why can't you eat it? You can eat it till dawn. So we have an, so we see that anonymous Mishnah in, in Psachim is going like Reb Lozim and Azario. Chay Mishnah Beizu Mekoman. The Stom Beso Perkam the Brochus Gab Maisu Bobonav Shem Ram Galil Mishnah Omalehem Komash Omru Chacham Et Chazos. Mitzvah Hashem and Hashachar. Vila Achilas Psochim Doktoni. Umuki Lok Reb Lozim and Hazar. At Chatzos and Kain Tzorch. He says, Therefore, Tosis' position is, we rule like Reb Lozim and Hazar. You can only eat Pesach only till midnight. Oh, so what, what, what relevance does that to us? Has relevance. We eat Afi Komen. Why do you eat an Afi Komen? That's commemorative to Korm Pesach. So if that's the case, you have to make sure you eat Afi Komen before midnight, the night of the Seder. In Kain Tzorch, the Meyer Lechol Matzav Levi Psochim. Kodem Chatzos. You have to make sure to eat the Matzav. At the Seder before Chatzos, I feel matzah shall have become not only the beginning of the matzah, even the closing matzah. I feel shrechiyuv matzah b'zman hazed or raisa. You have an obligation to matzah on a Torah level. Avol b'halel shall achem avikom. But if you, once you eat avikom and you want to say halel to dawn, that's gezunt that you do whatever you want. And lahachmi kokach shrei mitzrabanu. If it's the raisa, we have to be machmir. We have to treat it exactly like the korm pesach, which only till midnight. But halel, which is rabbinical. You have all night for that, even till dawn. What time do you have? Okay, so we, we could help you tomorrow. You won't have to do so much stuff. You'll meet tomorrow. We'll do an omit. We'll do this. Have Koresa Megillah. Omed the Yoshef. The posture, you could be standing, you could be sitting. Let's say you're not reading for Tzibor. You stand because it's covered at Tzibor. Let's see you're at home. You want to? See, you don't want to read the middle of standing. Sit at a table. It's fine. Kore v'yoshev. Omed v'yoshev. Kore echod koru shnayim. What if you have two people reading it? One person reading it. Well, let's see two people reading it simultaneously. So normally we say two voices cannot be heard. Some regarding the Megillah, it's, it's okay. Yotzu, mokshenogu vorech vorech in a in a community where the minug is to vorech. You say the bracha. Shalavarch lo yivar vuseik. Now we're talking about just Kriya Torah. On Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos Mincha. We're right with three, three aliyahs. Monday, th- right? Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos. Korin Shlosha. Yeah, you have to have Kohen, Levi, Yisrael. Three aliyahs. A Posen and Vimosim. You can't have less than three, and you can't have more than three. But we'll see. Shabbos, the, the daytime we have what we call Hosafos. You can add. But Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos Mincha, you can't have less, more. We don't have mafter, right? Unless it's a tainus. In the olden days, the Kohen said the opening bracha, 
and the what's his name and the one who, the, the Israel, the Shlishi, he said the closing bracha. The same person that said the bracha before and afterwards. Baroshi Chadoshim, Cholishamoid, Rosh Chodesh, and Cholamoid, how many leaves do we have? Korin Arbo, we have four. A Pulsimi and Vimosim Halein, you don't have less than four, you don't have more than four. A Maftir and Benovi, also no Maftir. Ha Peseach, Vachosim, Batoro, Mivorach, and Fonel, Akreo. So the Kohen says the Brocha, the one who receives your V, he says the closing Brocha. Zaklo. Kol Sheish be Musaf, if this Musaf, Veinu Yom Tov, it's not Yom Tov. No, not Mincha, not Mincha. Cholamoid. Right, or Cholamoid, or, or on, uh, what's his name? Right? Rosh Chodesh. Yeah, for, for Ali, it's a Cholamoid. Right? So you don't have less, you don't have more, and you don't have Mafter either. Rosh Chodesh, you don't have Mafter, also not. Okay? Korin Arbo. Kol Sheish with Musaf, Einu Yom Tif, Korin Barbo. So Rosh Chodesh, we have Musaf. Right? We have Musaf. Be Yom Tif, what about a reg Al Yom Tif? Chamish, you five Aliyahs. Beyond my Kippurim and Yom Kippur, Shisha, six Aliyahs. Not more, not less. Beshabe Shiva. A pulse in my hand, but Shabbos, you can't have less than seven. Ava Musif in line. We have Mafter, right? Mafter is the Eth Aliyah. Or the person receives Mafter. Or Maftir by Novi. And we have a Mafter in the Novi, right? We say Mafter in the Novi. Ha Paseach with Jose, but Torah and from there again. The one who begins, the one who closes, he says the Baruch before and afterwards. I told you the story with David Finkelstein. Remember David Finkelstein? Yes, David Finkelstein. Yes. So many years ago, I'm not going to mention the rabbi's name. He went to a shiva house. And uh, the rabbi, he's supposed to be an Orthodox rabbi, says to David Finkelstein, who's the Shams of Fifth Avenue, he says, uh, it's, it's Rosh Chodesh Day. Do we read two aliyahs, three aliyahs, four aliyahs? He wasn't sure. There's, there's a rabbi. I'm not going to mention names. Prominent synagogue, Manhattan. So David Finkel didn't answer him. Comes to and David Finkel was a Balkori. He read. Comes to the to the uh, to reading of Torah in the house. Both Cohen and Levi. All of a sudden, this rabbi he calls up a woman for the first uh, for the third aliyah. Rosh Chodesh calls a woman. So David Finkel stands two aliyahs. Closes it. Says Kaddish. That was the end of the Kriya Satora. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a story. And if I told you the rabbis, you wouldn't be shocked either. Okay. With Jamie. Okay. Yeah, I know that. Chaim. Yeah, his name's Chaim, his Hebrew name's Chaim. Okay. Tono, we learned in the Braiso. Masha ain't came by Torah. He says, but which is not the case. Megillah, you want to sit, you can read the Megillah sitting. But the Torah, you have to stand. When you read the Torah, that's it. In the Tzibur, you have to stand. Masha ain't by Torah, minani mili. How do we know? Omer abavo, domakro, vato, po, amodi, modi. But by Kabbalah, the Torah says, Hashem says to Moshe, you stand with me. In what context are we speaking of over there? That's Kabbalah, the Torah. If not, if the person wouldn't say what it says, you couldn't say such a thing. You stand with me. Does God, does God stand? Does he sit? I mean, to, even, to, to express it that way, it's a chas I mean, God is not a, not, not a physical being, doesn't have a profile. It's not any, any profile. But Hashem says, stand with me. So what is, that means Hashem is standing. It's one of the, 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 the teacher shouldn't sit on a, a, a cushion, and the student should sit on the ground. You see, the Rebbe and the Talmud, they're on the same level. The Rebbe, you stand, the Rebbe stands. You sit on a cushion, the, the Talmud stands on a cushion. You hear this? From the time Moshe Rabbeinu to Rabbi Gamliel, when they studied Torah, there was, you needed no chairs, no benches. You had that, no, no chairs rubbing on the floor, Howard. From Moshe Rabbeinu to Rabbi Gamliel, no, they studied Torah standing. Dining room, they had chairs. Meshemesh Rabbi Gamliel, Yorat Cholay Lolam. Rabbi passed away, when he, he passed on, 
illness, weakness, illness came into the world, and they st then they started to have the sift. People didn't have the strength. Vainut Nan, Mishmeshram Gamliel, when Gamliel passed away, Hagazokin, Botul Kavra Torah, meaning the honor. You know, why do you stand? It shows reverence. You don't sit, right? But, but physically, they're not capable. So again, so Kavra Torah came to an end. To show, to display that reverence came to an end. It's a known fact. What's his name? Um, I just read it. Uh, Rebbe Yoshev, his whole life, until the last, I think, 15 years of his life, he, s he learned Torah standing. So he came to the base Medrash in the morning. He learned there 12, 15 hours. He stood at the Shtender. He never sat at the table. Yeah. Until I read the story recently, because it was known the Ksav Sofer was the son, the most special son of the Ksav Sofer. He always stood. When he learned, he never sat. He always stood when he learned. I mean, when he lectured, when he said a shit, he sat. But when he would learn himself, he would always stand. Here it says, but everybody, there was no such thing as anybody learning Torah in a sitting position. But you have to have strength for it. I just read an article on back pain last week that a lot of back pain has to come from sitting. But if you stand... You'll, have, you'll be affected less. Not only that, when you stand, the bur body burns more calories. I think you burn 50 calories an hour standing. Whatever, yeah, 50, 50 calories an hour. How would you stand to stand up, please? No, but you'd lean on it. So that's not the same. Okay. Okay. Kosovechor Omer Veishi Bahor. One person says, I, I sat on the mountain. Moshe Rabbeinu says, I sat on the, in the mountain and I stood on the mountain. Omer, Omer Rav, Omeid, the Lomeid, he would stand and he, when he would learn from Hashem, he'd be standing. Yoshev Shabu, when you review it, you'd review in a sitting position. He was neither. He didn't stand, he didn't sit, he was, he was like lying, on, he was standing on an angle, meaning supporting, bent over. Shoche. interesting. You know, Ashkenazim, we, uh, uh, Mezuzah, when we put a Mezuzah up, it's always on a diagonal. Svardim, straight. It's vertical. You see Mezuzah, a Svardim puts a Mezuzah straight. Ashkenazim, it's on the diagonal. Why? Because there's a question. When you put a Mezuzah, should you put it uh, vertically or horizontally? So, it's, the Ashkenazim, Tosa says in Menachos, it's unclear. What's more respectful? Svarim, they rule it should be vertical. We're, we're, it's unclear for us. So you know what we do? We do it on diagonal. You say, but it's not supposed to be horizontal. No, that's called standing. And if you say, but it's not supposed to be vertical. It's not vertical. It's, 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 it's not diagonal. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, it's both. It's not, if it's supposed to be uh, horizontal, that's called horizontal. It, 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 that means it shouldn't be vertical. And if you say it's not supposed to be vertical, it's not vertical. It, it, it's on a diagonal. So Shoche, not standing, not sitting. He was like bent over. Rabbi Yochanan and Yeshiva El Lush Nakeva. The word Yeshiva doesn't mean physically sitting, it means he remained there. Shenema Vateshu Bakodish Yom Rabbim. It says they were in Kodesh, many they were Teshu. They sat. Rava Marakos Om Mumot Koshos Miushov. Okay? So now, again, it says. If it was something not too difficult to hear, to understand, then he would, he would stand. Koshos, but if it was much more difficult to him, he had to really exert himself, so then he would sit. Now, it doesn't mean to say he walks around. It's not walking around, being stationary. In other words, he had to concentrate more on He sat, yeah. You ever see what there's a picture, you know, okay, concentrating like this? That's where you concentrate, you're sitting. Just the opposite was it takes less effort. You're not expending your effort in, in, in the physicality. You're sitting in that. Yeah, but again, you have to concentrate. Everybody's 
Koro Echad or Koro Shnayim? We just have a few minutes. Koro Echad. If one would read it by himself, two people read something, Yosef. Torah Mashenku B'Torah, which is not the case by Torah. Two people reading the Torah, nobody's Yotze. By Begili, yes. Torah Rabbana B'Torah Echad Koro Vechum Targim. One reads it, and one uh, interprets it. Right? They, they have in, in those days, they had interpreters. Ovad Shiloh Echad Koro Yushnayim B'Targim. You should not have one person reading and two people interpreting it. Ubenovi reading the Novi, Echot Kori Shnaim Metargmin. Novi, yes. One reads it, two can interpret it. Uvachlu Shnaim Kori and Shnaim Metargmin. You should have two readers and two. Ubahalu Ben Megillah, hear this? But regarding Halel and Megillah, Afila Sora Kori. Ten people could read it together, and you, you could be Yotzev with Shemaya Kone. One second. Umegillah Afila Sora Kori, Vasor Metargmin. Yeah. Rega. My time, okay, the Chavivu Yov Dai Tayu Vishami, there's something which you really have an interest in listening to. Normally we say if two voices, you know, I, I don't, you, a person has difficulty focusing when you have two people speaking simultaneously. But let's say the subject matter is something very interesting. You, you put your mind to it, even the two things are going on simultaneously, you're able to tune in to one of them and to be able to hear it properly. One of the Hetairim, you know, there's an old question. It's famous. Response was written by, uh, he was a person whose name is Rabbi Weinberg. He was in Switzerland during World War II. He was, um, he was known as the Sri de Aish. He wrote a, a work on uh, Navale, on um, many things. During the war, after the war, you know, after the war, there were many orphans. Many orphans, boys and girls. And because of what they experienced, they lost their parents, lost their families. These kids, gave up Yiddishkeit. They were ready to go, throw it out the window. So, and many of them, many of the refugees were in Paris. When they left the DP camps, they were in Paris. And there was a person there, so there was an organization that was founded to be able to give these kids, these teenagers, some feeling, positive feeling about the Judaism. They created youth groups. And the organization was called Akiva. Not B'nai Akiva, Akiva. So, they would have activities every Shabbos. What would they get? The boys and girls would get together. They would sing. They would sing together. Songs, whatever the songs were. This is called, what about Kolisha? Yeah, here we're trying to bring back to, to be real observant, but you're not permitted to hear a woman singing. Of course, they, but they would sing in unison. So his rule, one of the heterim that he had was, he had multiple reasons why he permitted, is because Trey Koli lo mishtami, that's what the Gemara says here. That since when two people sing something, you can't really focus on one voice Therefore, the reason why you're not permitted, so you're not hearing that person's voice. You're hearing multiple voices. And that's one of the Heterim, NCSY in the United States, when they had the, these youth groups, they relied on his, on his Heterim. First, one Heter is that uh, we don't say call Isha if it's Psukim. If it's, if it's words, Psukim, you know, the, 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 the words are from Psukim. We don't, there's no problem with a woman singing, even, even a single woman, not, not multiple people singing. And the other Tanakh, anywhere from Tanakh, anything from Tanakh, okay? If it's Divrei Kodesh, if it's no, it would be okay according to this. But that's one, one, that's one position. Here, it's, if he's using multiple, firstly, it's, there, it's the word it's Psukim up to from Tanakh. Secondly, it's in unison. One, he did not line one by itself. It's only because the song is Psukim, and also it's done in unison. So it's true. You had to have both simultaneously, which they did. They, they sang, and what songs they sing? They sang what? Zmiris, or whatever it is. Or, sh or praise of Hashem. Doesn't have to be a puzzle. Zmir Shabbos, not Psukim. But it's words of praise of Hashem. It's not a problem. Okay, stop here. Okay, so we're, we almost got the blood in for tomorrow.